First Sergeant Kep here with Company D, Second United States Sharpshooters. Thanks for joining us on this video. And today I want to talk to you about the best NCO sword you can buy as a reenactor. Now, first, I want to start out by saying if you are a mainstream reenactor committed to only buying gear from the Sutler, this video isn't going to be for you. If you are serious about your impression, consider yourself a progressive reenactor, always trying to find uh, the best gear that you can afford and you're really serious about your impression all the way up to the campaigner spectrum of things then this video is really targeted for you now as an NCO you are you're allowed to carry the M1840 NCO sword the primary manufacturer during the Civil War was Ames and they are readily available um, from auction websites um, but most commonly what you see at events are reproduction NCO swords that are generally made in India. And when I was doing my research, I was really hoping to find maybe a high quality American reproducer of uh, Civil War swords. And unfortunately, those don't really exist anymore. Uh, I think they all kind of went out of business, you know, maybe 10 years ago or, or so. Sorry, the, the calves moving stuff around right now. But, so I was kind of disappointed in that and then I was starting to realize that some a lot more people were recommending buying an original sword. Now, being a sharpshooter and having some of the most expensive impressions in the hobby, I wasn't instantly turned away by the potential of having a substantial investment in my impression. But when I started looking online, I was surprised at how available and how reasonably affordable an original NCO sword was. So I ended up uh, finding this original NCO sword and I won the bid on eBay. And this is not an Ames, but it is a period contractor uh, from Germany known as Klauberg. And I won this bid for only $225. Uh, there was some tarnishing on it. The, the blade's not perfect. There's a little nick in it. It's a little wavy on on the tip, but it's in really good condition for being 155 years old. And having used a reproduction Indian made uh, NCO sword in the past at events, um, usually borrowed it if I had to have a good drill and in instructor uh, sort of impression or for a formal event. And then having, being able to hold an original was a night and day difference. Um, the the junk that they sell as NCO swords, it's essentially a, an overpriced children's toy. Um, everything, all the casting is far superior. The detail, even after all these years, is intricate and bright. The, the quality of steel is, in, you instantly notice the difference in the steel quality of these swords. The weight and the balance are fantastic. So I highly recommend getting a line and start looking for an NCO sword. The aims tend to run in the three to five hundred dollar range. If you could look on eBay, with a little bit of basic research, you can be a very intelligent and wary shopper, so you don't get uh, ripped off by, uh, a, you know, a, a fake. But also, some of the higher end sutlers will uh, actually uh, purchase original swords and have them available on their website. Now, I think because they go through a sutler that they tend to cost a little bit more, but you can generally fi find one for around $500 from a reputable sutler. <clears throat> the, the one thing that I seriously considered was you could also find original scabbards. The scabbards, the original ones will cost a ton of money because it's leather and that doesn't age very well and requires a ton of care. But I also felt as a reenactor, whereas I feel fine wearing an original sword, I kind of thought as, as a historian, it would be irresponsible to wear an original scabbard, uh, running, drilling, getting dirty in camp, and sort of the normal wear and tear. So I went online and I was shocked actually at how hard it is to find just a reproduction scabbard. Um, they're hard to find through sutlers, um, and they're also sometimes hard to find on eBay. And I eventually found uh, a well-known uh, reenactor supplier of uh, Civil War blades and scabbards. And I was also surprised because I paid $225 for the sword. The scabbard cost me $90 for a reproduction, which 
eh, I wasn't that wild about, but I did it anyway because I, need, I needed to have a scabbard. Now, the, the thing you have to keep in mind is original swords are about an inch longer than the reproductions. So if you get a reproduction scabbard, you actually have to refit your scabbard. I'm gonna twist this around. So you have these two brass fittings on these reproduction ones, and this is empty. This is empty space. So what I did, I decided on, well, which end of this scabbard would be the easiest to remove? And this is held on by a brass staple and some contact cement. So I pulled the staple and I uh, shoved a long screwdriver up around this, uh, this brass ferrule and popped the, the cement seal all the way around it and it just pulled right off. And you can see, if you can get in really close, how much further I had to raise the uh, brass part. But once I uh, lifted it up, I re-glued it and reinserted the staple and it's a perfect fit. So that's just one thing you have to keep in mind. <clears throat> and as far as the baldric, I highly recommend Dell's Leatherworks. Um, this this actually was, gosh, I can't remember how much this was, but it's available on the Dell's Leatherworks website. They have excellent quality gear, and you can also buy the breastplate from them as well. So all in all, I have a really great quality sword to carry at events and to really improve my impression and you have the benefit of reenacting with quality gear and one of the things especially in our sharpshooter unit we try to remind people that if you pay once cry once so you can buy uh, a whole bunch of really cheap gear over a long period of time and spend a whole lot of money building your impression up or you can just go ahead and say you know what I'm gonna save up I'm gonna get quality gear because I know I'll only have to buy it once for the life of my time in the hobby. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear them uh, down below. Be sure to subscribe and click that bell down below to get notified of all of our future videos. And thank you so much for watching.